Welcome back to MBOX Frustrated User Guide. You're watching MXQ Upgrade Secrets Part 1. When I bought my first media box two years ago, I assumed that MXQ was a brand name. I was wrong. It's not a brand name. It's just an expression like SUV. Any company can make these things, and while they may look alike on the outside, there are big differences inside. For example, their Wi-Fi adapters vary. Mine has a 9083 Wi-Fi adapter made by SmartChip technology. What difference does it make? The 9083 doesn't work with Libra Elec OS upgrades needed to run Kodi 18, but the 8188 made by Realtek does. The random access memory varies. Mine uses 1 gig of Nanya DDR3 SD RAM. Their embedded multimedia cards vary. This one uses an 8 gig NAND flash made by Hynix. It's pathetically slow. To make matters worse, many MXQs were supplied with incredibly bad remote controls. Others were supplied with remote controls that seemed to work fine. They all look the same but mine has intermittent buttons, sticky buttons, and buttons that just don't work. Talk about frustration. And according to spec device, my box was made by MBX, which may or may not have been a real company. Is it a fake? If so, who made the original? What do the letters M, X, Q even mean? Does anyone know? I think people use the word fake because MXQs tend to have advertised features that just don't work. Want more examples? The TV control buttons on my remote don't work because its CPU doesn't support learning mode. It's a fake feature. The OTA update doesn't work because this build was never registered with any server agent. Another fake feature. The network time sync routine doesn't work because it was never implemented in firmware. Mistake or fake? Either way, it doesn't work. And some vendors knowingly purchased 5 12 megabyte MXQs in bulk directly from Chinese manufacturers and falsely advertised them in online marketplaces as having 1 gigabyte of memory. That's more than fake. That's fraud. And that's what we're up against. Some folks got high spec boxes equipped as advertised. Others got low spec boxes equipped quite differently. The good news is that every MXQ receiving this upgrade should improve at least as much as this one. Higher spec boxes should improve even more. Now, before we get started, this secret upgrade procedure assumes that you already watched episode 3 making do with MXQ. That episode explains what it is we're trying to do. It also assumes a good working remote control like this G20, and preferably a keyboard with mouse buttons like this Logitech K400R. Start by uninstalling all of the non-working apps from your box. Go to Settings, Other, more settings, apps, downloaded, and get rid of each and every one of them. Unless it's working perfectly, even Cody can go. We'll replace it later with a fresh, clean copy. To uninstall an app, just scroll to it, click on it, and then click the uninstall button. You want to uninstall this app? Yes! Okay! Note that even though my box has been fully updated, the storage bar at the bottom of this window indicates less than one quarter full. That's the goal. All of the non-working apps have to go. When you're finished with that, navigate right to the list of all apps and disable Google Play Store. You won't be able to delete it, but you can disable it.
Google Play Store, Aptoid, and every other third-party app store tends to recommend apps that should work on low-spec MXQs, but don't. Reluctant to disable Google Play Store? Don't be. You can always re-enable it later. We'll use something else to get our apps. Next, check the version of Google Play Services that's installed on your box. Write down that version number. Chances are it's very old and needs to be updated. With the rare exception of Kodi, most Android apps depend on Google Play services and the streaming apps we want. Mobdro, Morph TV, and Movie Box Red won't work without it. So where do we get an updated version of Google Play services? We'll get it at apkpure.com. You can try to do this directly on your box using its built-in browser app. Good luck with that. But in most cases, it's much easier to use a computer. Start by searching APK Pure for Google Play services. But when presented with the results, don't click on Download APK. Instead, click the Versions button. This returns a page with every version APK Pure has. Start with the oldest release and work up. Click the menu, three dots button. If requires Android 5 or greater is shown, that version is not going to work on your box. Only download updates like this one, dated 2.19.05.20, that say they work on Android 4.1 Jelly Bean or Android 4.4.2 KitKat. One of those 4.1 to 4.4.2 releases is going to work miracles on your MXQ. I can't say exactly which release is going to work best because the bills vary so much. You have to try them all. So that's the big secret. You don't need to replace your firmware. All you need to do to get the box working again is update Google Play services. Update YouTube. Install Google APK. And replace the non-working apps on the firmware you already have. It's that simple. Here's a list of everything you should download off of the internet, showing the exact versions on my box as of August 2019. Note that often recommended MX Player is not on this list, and with good reason. MX Player has had issues on MXQ media boxes. You can read about it at Leobox. I can't stress this enough. If you want your MXQ to work as well as the one shown previously in making do with MXQ, stick to this list. And if APK Pure doesn't have one of these apps, just get it elsewhere. Now copy the downloads to a USB flash drive. Here's what the directory might look like. Transfer the drive to your MXQ Port 4 works best, and use either App Installer or File Browser to install them. Start with Clock Sync, unless you already have it, and make sure the time on your box is right. Next, update Google Play Services, then YouTube, then install Google APK. Voice control will not work without Google APK. If you don't own or plan to purchase a voice control remote, you can skip Google APK, but I don't recommend it. I say that because believe me, once you try a voice control remote, especially one with gyroscopic air mouse, you won't want to be without it. Additionally, Google APK secretly updates other part of the OS, including Google Play services. It also adds new text to dialog boxes. Everything seems to run better and make more sense after you install Google APK. The rest of the apps can be installed in any order. This procedure is going to take quite some time. Installations that only take a few seconds on my new Tanix TX6 can take minutes on my MXQ. Be patient with this. 
Now, if your streaming apps don't work at least as well as mine did in the previous episode, remember that launch times on this box are slow. There's an uncomfortable four to five second delay between clicking on an app and visual feedback. Don't be a wild clicker. Exercise patience. Give the app time to launch. And remember, initial launches are always slower than subsequent launches. What about IPTV? What about Miracast? What, what exactly do these remote control switches do? And how do you keep all this stuff running smoothly? We'll cover all that and much more next time on MXQ Upgrade Secrets Part 2.